I'm Sarah Chase. And I'm Christopher Cusick. We're table three of First Date. The best table in the show. The best table. I and um, we're here to talk to Broadway Spotted. Yeah, we're going to do a little uh, question and answer and see how it goes. Ooh, that's a great question. I think in rehearsal one day, we needed something to call this little gang that had started. So I think we just... Well, there's a table four in yeah. the show, so we're just like, we're table three. <laughs> yeah, we just sort of took it and ran with it. It was like, they mentioned table four. I'm talking. I think the waiter says, like, I'm talking to you, table four. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, Doesn't yeah. Say that? You pay attention. So Good. then we just yeah. said, well, I and mean, then clearly we're table three, so we... Yeah, and then it's easier when we get in trouble. be like, table three, stop talking. We're like... Not that that ever happened. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Never. Never. Ever. Not once. Not once. All right. Well, Linda in Fort Worth. I hope you're actually in Fort Worth because it'd be really awkward if you were like Linda Fort Worth, but you're like living in Tampa or I don't know Chicago or something. Okay, that's just a side tangent. I just <laughs> felt I should tell you that if you're not living in Fort Worth, I really suggest you change it now, right now. Um, okay. This is for the uh, dynamic yeah. of our table. For real. This, okay. This is kind of how we go. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so are the the question we're gonna we're gonna figure out if we like a favorite character or song. I uh, my favorite character to play is Reggie. Um, He's kind of my biggest character I have in the show. He's he's Casey's uh, gay BFF, and he's fabulous and big and yeah, it's just fun. It's just a lot of fun. So that's and I sing a lot of Baylot songs. So I guess that's my favorite song, too. Why not? Yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> I would say my favorite character is Warren because I get to interact with other people on stage, and I think the humor is close to mine. I mean, I don't think I'm that mean in real life. I mean, I don't know. That's my aunt's boyfriend. Oh, oh, what did you just... <laughs> Nothing, I didn't say anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my answer. Hi, Linda. Go ahead. Well, I think definitely for me, the audience likes Grandma Ida the most, I think. Because Lauren is there to, like, make it real. And, like, give a dose of reality. And no one likes that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, you know, I think that my favorite character is probably the audience's favorite of what I play, um, which is great, but also sometimes, like, so just so you know, if you come see the show, one of the other characters I play is a confused Jewish Christian rapper, and I kind of think that um, I'm basically, like, using it as my platform to audition for the entire um, recording industry for a record deal, uh, a rap deal in particular, and no one ever seems to mention it, which kind of bums me out because it's been making me feel like I'm maybe subpar in the rap field, which um, I don't feel that I am, and I just like to say that I feel like there's a niche market for, like, Jewish Christian rappers of the something nearing 40 age, and I'm available for any and all Aww. record deals. <laughs> Got that? I think, again, this was hatched during uh, rehearsal because we have this downtime where we sit at table three when we're not doing our characters, and I don't know. I think one of us must have just said. No, I know, I know, actually. I'm going to just pause her there because the way this all came about was that we would have a lot of downtime at table three, and during rehearsals, when you have a lot of downtime and you get started talking, it kind of becomes disruptive. So we just naturally geared towards pulling out our phones and texting and doing sure. stuff during the rehearsal process and getting in a lot of trouble from our stage manager for that. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But then it just sort of, I think that's kind of where it was born, yeah? Yeah. You kind of just, you kind of ran with it, actually. It was a yeah. lot of Sarah. Actually. Oh, it's no, it really was. <laughs> and then we begged, and then we had to prove that we wouldn't miss cues and we'd be on good behavior, and then it sort of happened, and it was, we loved it. We yeah. loved it, and I think it was a, a success, so hopefully we'll get to do it again. Yeah. You guys all seem to like it, so. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's really neat. And, I mean, I think the show lends itself to live tweeting. You know, I don't th I think it would be weird if, like, Chicago live tweeted. That would be weird. Uh, but for us, it just fits. I don't know. It just yeah, it's normal. Yeah, the style of the show. It's a dating show. It's we talk about people Google. our age. Yeah, yeah, you know, like. People it's very self-aware, and that's what yeah. Twitter is. and. And who hasn't been on a date when you're just like talking to the person, you're it's so awkward and you just wish you could pull out your phone and just oh my God, yeah. bury yourself in, twi in tweeting or texting or something other than having to talk to the other person. Not that she's not a delightful dinner companion every night for 90 minutes. Uh, every night. That's six, six days a week, uh, eight shows. Just want to point out. I love her though. She is a doll. Um, I know everything about her. Um, cut to the next question, please. <laughs>
Live, I live tweeting took ten years off of my life. Yeah, just this first time, um, because yeah. we didn't really, we didn't. Well, first of all, how is this for a live tweet thing? Zach's mic went out in the mid, in the top of the show, yeah. and he had to leave stage, which we never planned for, and um, we were just sitting there like in limbo for three minutes, which feels like an eternity on stage, but it was like the perfect thing to live tweet. And, yeah. but that wasn't the question. Um, yeah, it was terrifying. <laughs> it was terrifying. No, it's just terrifying actually too. Like a lot of people don't realize this. And even if you are the consummate professional and you've done this your whole life, I think that you wouldn't be human if you didn't get on stage and weren't nervous. And so we tend to be, I'll speak for myself for sure, but I, I think that table three has a lot of nerves going on a lot of the time. <laughs> so we're constantly just trying to stay focused and remember when we're supposed to stand up and not miss our cues anyways, um, even though we've been doing this for three months now. And, and that's a challenge in and of itself. So then adding that extra component where you're like trying to talk to people as they're like asking you questions live and take pictures and send it as... It was a really lot. hard. It yeah. really was a lot. Yeah, yeah. But now that we have one under our belt, like yeah. it's now is when the fun begins. Yeah. Yeah. Although it was totally fun. It was fun. It was yeah. it really was fun. Yeah. Okay. Well, we think it's totally weird because our first lines in the show, mine is a Catholic girl who is waiting to have sex until she's married, and then he's the pedophile who's not allowed. Yeah. To Spoiler alert! 50, 50 feet of a playground. <laughs> and then we end up at a table together. But, like, well, no, we have, okay. We have a great date, though. We have a great date because, look, there are other people in the cast who are really professional and they, like, pretend they're a character every night and they, like, improv, but. I don't know who this no. would be because there's only one at the table. So. <laughs> uh, Bryce and Kate, that's you guys. Uh, kudos. Very professional. We don't, no, you know what? I don't think we have a planned thing that we do. We just kind of. Every day we sort of like, we actually, I think what, and I'm really being honest, like I think what makes it fun and spontaneous and real is that we really are real. We have real conversations That's about true. what's going on, what we did with our day, or um, I think it's important that the audience feel as though we're engaged in, in an actual like first date when you, you would really be talking a lot to try to get to know the other person, but I don't, I, for, for just fear of becoming completely um, bored if I was to say the same things to you every night at the table and sit oh, yeah. and pretend like I was the same guy every night and going through the date as like a real time date, yeah. it might be, for improv reasons, it might be a little weird. So we just we just keep the conversation up and happening. And yeah. Oh, I actually forget a lot of what, we were changing yeah. so much on a daily basis that, um, Actually, somebody sang, I don't even remember what happened last night, somebody sang a bit of the show oh, yeah. um, the other night in our vocal rehearsal, and I had forgotten that that was like a line from yeah. the show, and I was like, oh, I, I kind of liked that part, and now I can't even remember what, what that was either, it was in the opening number. Um, I always say, because our book writer is from sitcom TV land, like every night felt more like a different take as opposed to a show, because if you ever go to a, a sitcom taping, yeah. like they do one take and then they change up the jokes and do another take and they just see what works in front of a live audience, it felt more like that. I mean, my God, our our opening lines must have changed like 20 times. Sometimes they would change twice on the end of the day. Yeah. We would go to, we would do something in the morning that was brand new from the night before, yeah. and then we'd come back after lunch and they would have rewritten that and we'd do a new version of it after yeah. lunch, so. Actually, backstage, stage management did the greatest thing. Our All of our walls are plastered in all the cut lines and bits from previews, so yeah. I guess we should refer to that. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. There's a lot, a lot. But you know, it's like, I mean, if we miss something, Actually, I, I don't. I don't really think I miss anything because I think the show is so much better now than yeah. when we first started out. So it's working. I, I think it it just works better. So I think yeah. if we were to put back in a line or two that maybe I have missed or something. I mean, my monologue for Reggie at the end changed a lot. And when I first did the new version of the monologue, I was just like kind of devastated and completely thrown. I didn't know what to think because I thought the last one was so funny. How am I going to possibly make this one funny? And now I can't imagine doing yeah. the old version. This is so much better. Yeah. And so much funnier. So, yeah. 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 Linda in Fort Worth, that was for you. Yeah. Again, Linda, Fort Worth. Or Tampa. We love you. Or Tampa. Yeah. Susie in Tampa. She could be anywhere. She's probably out there. It's probably the question we get the most from people at the stage door is what do we talk about? What do we actually fit really we talk, talk about? about who got kicked off Project Runway. Absolutely. America's Next Top Model. Yeah. Um, 
uh, whether or not we should be getting faceless within the next five years yeah. if we're starting to look old and haggard. Yeah. Sometimes he puts his Ricola in his bottom lip and pretends he's Bubba from Forrest Gump. You know, the important no. things. It's um, keeping my um, yeah. accents and my acting chops up. That's what that Sometimes is. we do impressions of other people on Broadway. Um, yeah. It's fun. It's, it's a fun. lot of fun up there. Yeah. It's real great. But we're in the show. We're like in it and focused. To win it. Probably we should have said that. Right? They're all loving impressions. Yeah, they're like, loving impressions. It's like, I will give you my best Daphne. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. This is my impression, since I did rent for a long time and I love her to death. Um, this is my impression of my, my love doing, um, doing, well, let's do how to have her do bailout. Should I have her do oh, bailout? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is your bailout, sweetie, your bailout. Honey, I'm calling to bail you out. That, that was really good. We don't really pay attention to anyone else but ourselves. Uh, That's the truth. What what character? Oh, <laughs> of, of all the characters. I'm sorry, of not of just the characters I play. Yeah, oh. that's right. Can you answer that? Uh, yeah, I can. Who do you relate to? I. I mean. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I identify probably with Reggie the best because I have so many friends that are just like Reggie and I'm a skosh dramatic at times. I can kind of fly off the handle and be a little bit over the top. And yeah, I definitely think that I would identify with him the best. I mean, on a date, I think Reggie would be so much cooler than I would ever be on a date. So for sure, if I was on a date, I'm absolutely Zach's character. I'm absolutely, absolutely Aaron because I'm... I get all flustered. Clearly, in this interview, you can see that, and I'm like, oh, then I, what am I saying? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you uh, used the word skosh. I did use, I mean, after that Daphne impression, I'm pretty much never going to do it again. So. We're calling out tonight. That was really hard. That was rough. That was really good. God, she's good. Yeah. You're good, Daphne. Um, I don't know, what about you? Who do you identify with? Who do I identify with? Reggie. She's kind of Reggie, a gay man yeah. trapped in a straight woman's body. It's true. She is. Yeah. You yeah. are. It's true. You really are. Yeah. Thank you. I love you. Ah, I love you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sarah Chase. And I'm Christopher Cusick. And uh, this was awesome, Broadway yeah, Spotted. Yeah, thanks, Broadway Spotted. It was awesome. And uh, Linda in Fort Worth and Susie in Tampa, we love you a lot. I'm at Sarah with no H underscore Chase. And I am <laughs> at Christopher Q6, and that's K-R-I-S-T-O-F-F-E-R, -F -F -E the letter Q and the number six. That's right. I spell it weird. What can I say? Follow me, because I love you, and I'll talk to you. But follow me more, because we're in a competition. But then drop her, and then re-follow me, well, and tell your mom to follow me. Tell, tell your church, your temple, and your Buddhist retreat to follow me. Do you know every time we tweet we lose followers? So I know. Can I stop. ask you guys what's that, I know, what's that about? Why, why do people like? Why wouldn't you tweet and you didn't even do anything wrong? And you wake up in the morning, you had like a wonderful night's sleep, great dream, and then all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, five less people follow me. I didn't even say anything offensive in the night. Like I, didn't I know. Tweet. This is what literally happens? what we talk about at table three. Like how could people do that to us? They Don't just they hate know we're fragile? Yeah, they just hate you all of a sudden out of nowhere. I did tweet something it. offensive, lost a follower, and then took it away immediately today. That's good. I tweeted a Christmas picture. I thought that, that would help get people on board, but I lost a lot of Jews after that. <laughs> First impressions. I went totally wrong. Why is I love she her. Uh, I never I came on, a, on, a, on the fly. I gotta rehearse that.